Welcome back to Legal Discussions. I'm here with Salt Lake City Attorney John Bogart. Welcome, John. Uh, thank you. It's nice to be here again. Hey, great to see you. I know we've talked a lot about litigation. Today, I'd like to have you uh, give us some more insight into uh, the different types of litigation in regards to arbitration. Sure. There are some differences between arbitration and mediation. Can you help uh, clear that issue up? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Uh, we have been talking about litigation, which is, you know, when you file a lawsuit or someone files a lawsuit with the court and the dispute is pursued through channels of the court and formal discovery. But there are alternatives, and you mentioned two of them, and we'll get to another one a bit later. Uh, the primary alternatives are arbitration and mediation. Uh, and most people, I think, are familiar in a very general sense with the notion of arbitration. You look at any of your credit card agreements, your telephone contracts, all of those you'll find if you look through the whole contract, an arbitration provision. And many businesses include arbitration agreements uh, or provisions of the contracts they enter into, not just with consumers, and that's where it's most common, but with other businesses as well. And the idea of arbitration is you take your dispute and it's settled privately. So there are several or big organizations nationally which provide arbitrators, and there are many regional and smaller organizations which provide arbitrators. And basically, an arbitrator is someone who essentially serves as a judge, but it's a private party, and the parties, the two sides, or three or four sides of the litigation, pay respectively the hourly fee of the arbitrator, uh, if there's one arbitrator. And in many bigger kinds of commercial kinds of cases, there'll be three arbitrators. And uh, so the parties are basically paying for the whole process. and They pay for the whole decision-making process. And some of the advantages which uh, go with arbitration are typically they're a lot faster. Typically the cost is overall, in general, lower. And typically they have less discovery, which is partly how they make the costs a bit lower. Is that done usually uh, uh, way before discovery, or where does that enter into in the process as far as timing? Yeah, uh, arbitration is really uh, in place of filing a suit in a court. Uh, under federal law and under state law in almost every state, in fact, every state that I've looked at, but I can't be certain because I haven't looked at all 50, there are statutes which provide strong preference for enforcement of arbitration clauses. So if you've got a contract and the contract has an arbitration clause, you can be pretty sure that you're going to go with that dispute into arbitration. Now, the thing about arbitration with respect to what we've talked about in the past about discovery is that arbitration does not necessarily include discovery. Certainly, when you get to the parties who are involved, the arbitrator can order discovery, production of documents, people to appear for depositions, answering interrogatories. But arbitrators and arbitrations are private proceedings, and they don't normally have the force of uh, courts. So you can't get to third parties with anything like as much ease. So in a normal case, you can require third parties who have information to produce that information, either through a subpoena which requires a deposition or a subpoena which requires production of documents. Arbitrators don't normally have that kind of power, and so they can't do it. So if you have kinds of cases which involve lots of third parties, the parties to the litigation may decide they don't want to be in arbitration for that kind of a reason. And of course, uh, it's not really important to us right here now, but there's a whole different set of world that works with respect to international arbitrations that have to do with a bunch of things that uh, are, are very complicated and have to do with different kinds of jurisdictions. But for the normal person involved in arbitration, you will be able to get some discovery, both sides will, there will be some kinds of depositions, and you'll make submissions to the arbitrator or the three arbitrators who then decide the case, issue their order. Now, the important thing at that stage is to understand that but the court is going to enforce whatever the arbitrator's order is, except in very narrow circumstances. And those are things like the arbitrator engaged in fraud. The arbitrator was in wanton disregard of what the actual law applicable to the case is or was. And those are the kind of, that's the kind of standard you have to meet, which really means that when the arbitrator's issued the arbitration decision, you have to live with it. The courts will not intervene, except in the rarest of circumstances. 
I see. That does that helps clear that up a little. I, I uh, can you explain a little bit about the difference between arbitration and mediation? Uh, I can. And the main difference between arbitration and mediation is um, that the mediator is not in a position to issue a judgment. So mediation is about getting the sides to talk to each other and reach an agreement. And skilled mediators are the folks who are able to identify and in the interests of the adverse parties where they might have some common grounds and induce them based on an understanding of their respective positions and the strength of their positions to come to a voluntary agreement. Mediators mediate. All they do is get together with the parties and talk. Mediators are not involved in discovery of any kind, right? So arbitrators can order production of documents. Mediators don't order anything. In a way, you should think of it as like going to see your aunt or uncle when you're having a fight with your brother or sister. The aunt or uncle can tell you what to do, suggest to you how to solve the problem, but they can't order you around. And that's really what a mediator does. They just try and get people together. I see. So the mediation is more outside of the courts. Uh, it is, though, often very common now, uh, certainly in my state of Utah and uh, lots of other places, is the courts will order parties to mediation before they will permit a trial. So the parties are sort of forced to consider settlement as a last step before they actually incur all of the trouble of a trial from the court's position is that, you know, that order forces people to talk to each other and you get at least some level of settlements and that gets cases out of the courts and that's why the courts like it. It's sort of a cost saving issue for the courts, I think, as well as um, litigation naturally creates a lot of hostile feelings. And it's a way to get people to look past the frictions of litigation to see if there's a realistic way to settle these kinds of things. Now, so a lot of times it's in the best interest of the client to consider these as options prior to pulling the trigger for a full-blown court case. It, it is, and that's exactly why at least arbitration clauses are so common these days. And the strength of arbitration should be seen. There have been recently... Uh, a couple of years ago, there was a case in the Supreme Court, uh, Concepcion versus AT&T, and there was another recent case that just got handed down just last term. It's just concluded from the Supreme Court about enforceability of arbitration. The thing about arbitration is it, it does go faster in general. And for some kinds of small claims, which was what was at stake in Concepcion, that was a fight about a cell phone contract, actually. Uh, the courts are going to enforce the arbitration, which means there aren't a lot of fees involved on either side. But for consumer level arbitration provisions, uh, the states frequently, and the federal government is more inclined towards this as well, effectively require the party with the bigger pot, which is the big company, AT&T, to provide an arbitration process which makes it possible for consumers to resolve their issues. Because initially, early in the days of arbitration when it was being enforced, you would have arbitration agreements where, in consumer context, you had to pay for the arbitration. And frequently, the cost of arbitration is higher than your dispute. Like, if you're having a fight about $50 with your phone company, only a fool would spend $1,000 to get their 50 bucks back. Just nutty. So many states started forcing companies, and then companies saw on their own that it was to their advantage to set up arbitration provisions and systems so that the consumers could actually pursue their, these kinds of claims because that kept off the pressure to alter the uh, statutes favoring arbitration. What happened most recently here with the uh, Italian Colors case is that the Supreme Court looked at arbitration provision between two companies, a small restaurant and American Express, decided to enforce it. And one of the interesting things about that case is that the Supreme Court upheld it compulsory arbitration clause, even though in the context it made absolutely no economic sense for uh, Italian colors to pursue its claims. It could not possibly have uh, recovered anything like enough in the way of an arbitration award to cover the cost of going through the arbitration. So it's an interesting dichotomy between the way consumers and companies get treated. It's, it'll be interesting to see how long that uh, disparity it lasts and whether or not arbitration provisions with respect to corporations are going to have to also change in a way that reflects more like consumers. But the ultimate message is the one you noted at the start of this little bit here, namely that arbitration is frequently faster and cheaper 
It's not always, but yeah, good lawyers will always advise our clients to think about things besides filing a lawsuit. And, and maybe that's where we should end, is talk a little bit about, there's a third alternative here, which we haven't talked about. Lawsuits, litigation, that's a very formal process. Arbitration is not quite so formal, but it's pretty formal. Mediations are formal in the sense that they get ordered by courts and they're very common in that sense. But there's a fourth option here, which uh, it, it needs to be reconsidered and lawyers should suggest to their clients they reconsider every time, which is go talk to the other side. You may have just a miscommunication. You may be able to just resolve this without getting involved in arbitration, mediation, litigation at all if you just let people cool off and then go back and see what the real problem is and see if you can fix it. Because uh, the thing, plain fact is lots of cases settle because the halfway through litigation or in the mediation, people suddenly realize, you know, uh, here's a business solution to this problem and it's done. And if you can get to that earlier, obviously you don't pay the lawyers as much and that's sad for folks like me, but it saves the client a good deal of money and time. Well, that's a great point, and I'm glad that you said that because it seems like in today's society, so many people are litigious and they want to jump right to the gun. So it's refreshing to see somebody like you out there who's looking out for the best interests of the clients first. John, it's always a pleasure to have you here on Legal Discussions, and I would encourage anyone, we're going to put up the screen here at the bottom, to call John Bogart at this number here, 888-895-9517. Or visit his website at telusvglaw.com. John Bogart is one of the nation's leading business litigation attorneys, and we encourage you to call him if you have some questions or would like to pursue anything else. Again, thanks again, John, for being with us, and we'll talk to you soon. It was a pleasure.